So I have a lot of fixed plates. Uh, these are just the ones that I have here. I've got some at home. I keep some in my trucks. I keep fixed blades around all the time. They're convenient. They're nice. I like them. They're easier to clean and maintain, often easier to sharpen because you don't have to worry about things like thumb studs. I like fixed blades and over the last probably two years, I have acquired many and started to carry them more and more frequently. I still carry a uh, folder pretty much all the time. And even when I have a fixed blade, I often still carry a folder with that. But point is, um, I like fixed blades and they're really nice for EDC. A lot of the time they are not exactly super convenient all the time because they can be bulky and big and not exactly comfortable. And if you can't find a good sheath, then that's a whole nother problem in and of itself. But I figured now is as good a time as any for me to talk to you about my five favorite fixed blades for EDC. So that's what this video is about. And with that said, let's do the damn thing. So I, as I said, I have a bunch of fixed blades. However, there are some that I think are just better suited for EDC than others. And I would say that these right here are my five favorite with, I would say the first of all of these that I purchased the first fixed blade I tried to EDC and failed several times to do that until I came across the sheath here. That would be this blade right here. This is the Bradford Guardian 3. This one comes in M390. They do a bunch of different blade steels. They have tons of scales that you can swap onto these if you want to change it up. They have 3D, they have contoured, all sorts of different stuff. Uh, they have this blade shape and then also a sheep's foot. What I, what I really like about it is the ergonomics. This thing fits in the hand like a glove. The jimping is in a really good place and it fills the palm up really, really well. And you're getting kind of a really short handle and a lot of blade for that. And it's just one of these things that makes this, it, it kind of looks a little weird. Something looks kind of off, but I've often compared this to like a Sabenza fixed blade. It's made in the USA. It's got a very similar blade profile to a large Sabenza, but it does have a smaller handle. So it's actually shorter overall if you have an, a Sabenza open next to it. Uh, I just think this is a really, really great knife for the money. The worst part, has to be the sheath. The belt sheath that comes with the Guardian 3 is one of my least favorite sheaths ever. It's like this scout sheath, and it's not that bad if you like scout sheaths. I don't. If I'm gonna carry a knife on my belt, I would almost prefer it to be vertical, not scout carry, but I found this guy a long time ago. Uh, I do believe they are out of business now, Roke, but there are other people who are making sheaths. This sheath made this knife for me because it is a really nice, high quality, this is Vachetta leather, uh, leather pocket sheath with a clip. So I can carry this in my front right pocket where I would normally carry my folder. And it's just one I don't think I could ever go without having a Bradford Guardian in the collection. It's, it's just solid. So that is number one. And that is the Bradford Guardian 3 specifically with a leather pocket sheath. I did have an armatus sheath for this thing, and it's really good if you wanna carry it like on a backpack strap, or if you do like a Kydex sheath on your belt, that's just not for me. You could do the armatus with a, an ulti clip, which I tried, but this right here was the magic combination. This is the tactical pterodactyl or TPK mid-sized Raptor in a sheep's foot. I freaking love this knife, but the, the ergos on this are really quite similar to the Bradford Guardian. Let's just pull it out real quick again. Um, you got a nice big finger choil. The, it, the handle shape on them are very similar. This one obviously has a lot more girth to it, uh, but everything is right on this. The jimping, the size, the shape. I, I really love this. The only thing I'm not a huge fan of with this knife is just the, it's orange, right? Like that's fine, I guess, but uh, you can't swap these scales out. They're made to the knife. So they're all specific to the knife that they're, they're all customs and you can't just swap the scales like you can with the Bradford Guardian. So the only way I would ever get rid of this knife, I think personally would be if I found one in a drop point or clip point with like my Carta or some other handle on it. And the only reason I don't carry this more than I do comes down to sheath options. There's only one, it's this one, which is custom to this knife and that's that I can have a leather sheath commissioned for it, I guess, if I wanted to, but I have put the rack and pinion set from the Ulti link from Ulti clip on this sheath. And now I can, you know, snap it to my, my backpack. So I will probably carry this one more moving forward. This will be the backpack knife. The, the only downside to TPK is getting one. 
he operates in drops. They're first come first serve. I always miss the drops. So I found this one secondary in my Discord server. I think I bought it from Rue, who's one of the mods. Um, great knife, love it. TPK Raptor, this will not be my last one. They're really sick knives. So the next knife, I've probably owned this one longer than that TPK, but it doesn't really matter. We're just going through them in no particular order, really. Uh, very similar in size, shape too, as well. We've got that big finger choil, like, very, very similar. Still a sheep's foot. But this, but this is the Giant Mouse Knives GMF1, and it is a skeletonized, very small EDC fixed blade. Very lightweight, very thin. And the reason I really like this, uh, I, I can't say it's necessarily this sheath. This sheath comes from Oak City Leather Goods, who's somewhat local. I think they're in like the Raleigh, Cary area of North Carolina. The sheath in and of itself isn't spectacular it's good it's fine it's squared rather than you know made to the shape of the knife but really the the downside to this is the clip the clip is very very thin and not that great doesn't have great retention but it's so thin that it's like not carrying a knife and that's why i've included this like i wouldn't even mind without this clip just slipping this whole thing down into my pocket yin's anso and yes revoxinez are just masters of ergonomics and the gmf1 it's no different. Uh, M390 steel on this one, I'm pretty sure. It's not marked anywhere that I can see. Made in Italy. The heat treat is something that often gets called into question from some of these M390 knives out of Italy, but I I've had no issues with this. This knife, for what it is, is really great. I've got another one that, that really kind of checks all the same boxes, and that is the Pena X series. Uh, I don't even know. Just, <laughs> just this little skeletonized fixed blade from him as well. Also comes in a similar sheath. The clip is much better, but this sheath is literally twice as thick. So when it comes down to it, if I'm going to grab one, I'm probably grabbing the, the giant mouse, even though I typically am more of a drop point kind of guy. This just kind of edges out the Pena just a little bit. So this next knife I got at Blade Show last year, and I've carried a significant amount. I don't know how much I've carried it, but it's a lot. Um, this one's just easy to carry and it's a great knife. And I got this one directly from Yannick himself. It was a gift from Yannick of Daily Customs, Daily Knives. This is the AK-1, but this particular one is a custom regrind by Alex Kremer. Um, and I got to choose scale colors, the inlay, and it's all customizable too, right? You can take this apart and put different handles on it. This thing is just really sick. It's a phenomenal little knife, very thin and slicey. And you also have the ability, you can take these handles apart. If you look right there, I don't know if you can see it on camera, there's two little notches or, or cuts. Um, there is actually a lanyard insert. If you take this apart and flip that around, you can put a lanyard hole at the very end of the handle. I ended up never wanting a lanyard on this knife, so I flipped it around to make it just really clean. It, it kind of reminds me of like a EDC steak knife or something. It's just really, really good. Fits in the hand well. And this sheath is really something that sets it apart. Uh, I don't remember all the details about this sheath. I'll put it up in a card on the video because it, it needs to be said. But the sheath is also, again, one of the things that just makes this knife. Without this sheath, this knife would have never seen a day of carry. Just because if I'm going to carry a fixed blade, it's usually going to be in the pocket unless I'm out of doing some stuff in the woods or whatever but even then i typically prefer a uh, pocket carry anyway this is probably the most carried fixed blade from me daily not every day but the most carried fixed blade in my pocket so the next knife is a very very close second to the ak1 and this is the griffin co scout 2.5 i've got brass scales on it they are also hot swappable and i've gone back and forth between brass and my carta because you guys know i just i can never choose this is s35 vn blade steel the ergos again just really good you can tell with these uh edc fixed blades i kind of have a theme going here kind of smaller all very similar ergonomics for the most part um the biggest one here is the bradford guardian it's mostly blade but yeah i, I just tend to stick to this one thing and i really love the size and shape and the appearance of this knife. Uh, I think it's really good. The only thing I don't love about it is this little notch cut into it. Uh, and it's the same with any that have this, like in a folding knife, this would be 
like a thumb slot or a finger slot for opening. In this knife, I, the only purpose it would really serve is like weight reduction, but it's already, I mean, with brass that really doesn't help at all. And it's, it's visual, right? This is a visual aid or something just to set it apart. Like it looks fine, but if you cut food or anything like this, this is just something that gets gunked up a whole lot. And that's, it's not a huge deal, but that's really the only thing I've noticed it do is just get stuff in there and then I'll get like surface rust and I've got to, you know, flitz it out of there. But that's, that's really it. Uh, other than that, this knife is really, really great. And a very close second to the AK-1 in terms of which one I carry the most. Really, of all of them, this one feels the most like a workhorse, the second being like the Bradford Guardian, but it just feels like a tank. It feels like it's ready to do work, even though you don't have a whole lot of blade to work with. You don't need a whole lot of blade to work with for most tasks, and this thing just feels game for all of that. Uh, but, the, uh, but I think the thing that really set this apart more than anything was that when this was sent to me, I also got a pair drop leather sheath and this sheath is the best leather pocket sheath I've ever received for a knife. It's it's really good. So this one is really good. This one's also really good. This one is kind of a notch above. And I think it's just the design, the clip, the fact that it's, it's angled a little bit better. This is awesome. This combo is just OP. But there you have it. This is the Griffin Co. Scout 2.5. He also has, Griffin Co. also has a folder coming up that looks just like this. And I really want to get my hands on one of those, but they're coming out next couple of months, I believe. But there you have it. These are the five EDC fixed blades that I would say, in my opinion, are the best. Uh, I obviously have not tried all of the EDC fixed blades and you guys are going to have your own opinions. I really love all of these. Don't ever plan on getting rid of them. I, I, I like having these around. This is uh, just an honorable mention. This is the Wesson Knives Bornus. And these aren't out yet. I've had this for a couple of months now, and it's been the knife that I've had on my backpack strap. You guys have seen that in a previous video. That's what I swapped this with, or this is now taking over. But I've used this thing a good bit. I like it a lot. It's something that, you know, when I first got it, I was like, eh, that's okay. But the more I used it, the more I liked it. The size is right shape is right i really like this thing and it would be on this list with these other fixed blades but it's not available yet so i felt weird about putting it in this list with things that you can buy right now for the most part with things that aren't you know being <laughs> dropped and out of stock but these aren't available they're available for pre-order but they'll be out in july i believe um it's really cool they have it in this od green handle as well as a rosewood handle it looks great great in both configurations and the sheath for it is actually really good the retention on it is insane, like really insane. I just haven't really come up with a solution for carrying this in my pocket. Really cool little knife. I believe these are also S35VN. Uh, pretty cool stuff. Check them out. But yeah, that's it. Uh, you can check all of these out. They're all going to be linked down below. Not all of them are available all the time. I mean, they're in and out of stock. I think most of these you can buy right now. Let me know what your favorite EDC fixed blade is in the comments down below, especially if you think it's one I should check out because obviously this is something that I'm growing more and more interested in just for various reasons. I, I think they're very useful and handy. There's less to break on a fixed blade, easier to clean. They have a purpose. They have a use. They're not always the most convenient EDC blade, but... Regardless, I've been carrying them more and more, and I'm interested to find more really cool stuff that maybe is not on my radar. That's it. I'll see you guys later. Thank you for watching, and until next time, carry on.